In this video, we will show that the class of decidable languages is closed under the star operation. So what do we mean by that? We mean if L is decidable, it must be the case that L star is decidable. So uh, what we need to do is show that if L is decidable, we can construct generically a decider for L star. So our idea is going to be to construct a decider that can cut the string into chunks. And then if each of the chunks is accepted by the decider for L, then the whole string should be an L star. So let's just convince ourselves first uh, that this idea is correct, and second, that this could actually be done uh, in finite time by a decider, by a Turing machine. So let's consider the string um, ABC. Okay, and we want to know, is ABC an element of L star? Well, ABC is going to be an element of L star if any of the following is true. Okay, ABC is an L star if ABC is an L, right? So what does L star do? Um, it takes any string, any string in the language L and either can repeat that string uh, zero more times, so um, epsilon is always in L star. Um, ABC would be in L star if ABC is an L. Okay, what else can it do? It can take um, a string from L and create it with another string from L, a different string from L, or from with the same string in L. Um, and it can do this for any number of strings. Okay, so if ABC is an L, then ABC is an L star. If AB and C are in L, then ABC is an L star. How? We take um, AB, we can concatenate it with C, and that's going to be an L star. Okay, likewise, if A and BC are in L, then this would take A, concatenate it with BC, and that would be an L star. If A and B and C are in L, then we just concatenate each one of those individual strings and we would get ABC and L star. Okay, so this idea of taking ABC and trying each one of, uh, each way to cut it into parts and then check to see if each of the parts, so really here I didn't do any concatenation, I just took the original string. So what our machine would do is it would say, okay, I have the string ABC. How, how many ways uh, can I cut this up and then let me check to make sure that um, for any one way to cut it up, each of the component strings is in the language. So here there's no real cut, so we just check to see that ABC is an L. And if it is, then we could accept ABC and L star. Let's say that one didn't work. Meh, that didn't work. Then we would try the next cut. We would say, okay, cut it into AB and then C. So there's a cut here. Now check, is AB an L? Is C an L? If both of them are, then L star could concatenate this together and ABC would be an L star. So let's say that worked, then I could accept. Okay, and I could go through my list and try each kind of cut until I find that one that works. And if I don't find any that works, then there's no way uh, to cut this string up so that its component strings is an L, which means that that string can't possibly be an L star based on the defi definition of L star. Okay, and notice we can do this, uh, we can do this with any string. So even if it's say A, 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 if we're checking to see is that an L star, well, it will be if any of these are in L. So if A, A, A is an L, if A, A, comma, A is an L. So what do I mean? I mean that both A and A is an L. Okay, algorithmically, I would also try this cut even though I know it's the same as the last one, right? My component pieces end up being the same, but as a Turing machine, I don't know that. So I would check that one as well. 
Or if, oh, I ran out of page. Let's put it over here. If A, A, A is an L. So here really I'm saying, is A an element of L? If it is, then A, A, A is definitely an element of L star. And so I can accept. Okay, so this is the idea. <clears throat> now we need to make sure that there is a finite number of cuts. Uh, how can we prove that? That we would only have to check a finite uh, number of possible cuts. Um, well, if you think about what those cuts looked like, let me take ABC again. And then let's actually, instead of thinking of the characters, I want you to think of the spaces between them. Okay, so if I don't have either one of these cuts, this corresponds to the string ABC. If I have one of them, the one on the right, then this is AB concatenated with C. The one on the left, A concatenated with BC. And if they're both cut, then I have A concatenated with B concatenated with C. Okay, so notice here, what do I have? How, or I should say, how many possible um, ways to cut the string are there? Well, there's two to the, I'm gonna say number of possible cut positions. Okay, so we had two possible cut positions and then um, by listing out whether or not that cut is actual, that cut position is actually cut, I'm gonna end up with, uh, so I have two, cut, two possible cut positions, so I end up with two to the two, which is four, which is how many I had. Um, what do the possible cut positions uh, correlate to? Uh, they correlate to the spaces between the characters. And what is that? Um, so this is equal to the length of W minus one, right? So every string is finite. A language might be infinite, but a string is finite, which means it has a finite length. Okay, so given a particular string, then I know how many, uh, I know the length of the string, so I know the length of W, and so I know how many um, possible cuts I have to try. Okay, so when we were doing this, I know the length of my list. Okay, so we've just shown that there's a finite number of um, cuts we have to check, and we can calculate this by um, knowing the length of the string. Okay, so now let's go into our proof. Okay, so let's let L be a decidable language and let D be the decider for L. Okay, so we're assuming L is decidable and it has a decider D. Okay, actually, we don't really need that part. Do we need that part? Um, yeah, we can leave it in. We'll see if we need it. All right. Construct the following TM D prime. Okay, what does D prime do? So notice uh, D prime is going to either uh, accept or reject a string for L star. Okay, so it's going to take in a W. First step. For each of the ways to cut W in two parts. This is what we did on the last, uh, what we did earlier, where W equals W1, W2, all the way up to WN. Okay, we took each way to cut W into components. So here's where we could use the decider for L or uh, 
we can just use the machine M. Let's use the machine M first, and then maybe we can talk about how we would just change this proof to use the decider. So we would simulate M on WI for I from 1 to N, meaning simulate the machine M. You're right. I'm going to change this. This is why I had D. Okay, run D on WI for I from 1 to N. What do we mean? We mean run the decider for L on each component string. If D accepts all of them, then accept. Okay, so this is similar to saying pick, uh, pick this way of cutting the string. Run it on the component. Run D, the decider for L on the component. If it accepts, then accept. Okay. So for example, in this one, if we were trying out this cut, we would run D on A, then we would run D on B, then we would run D on C. If it accepted all of them, then they're all in L, and then ABC is in L star. Okay. Otherwise, if we get to step two, it is because for, we've tried each of the ways to cut W into parts, so each of those uh, two to the length of W minus one ways to cut up W, and we never got an acceptance in A, okay? Otherwise, we accept an exit, right? So for in two, then all cuts have been tried, and really I mean all of the ways to cut W have been tried. without success, so reject. This means there is no way to cut up W into parts with all of the parts being an element of L. Okay, and that's the only way it can be an L star, is if each of the parts that we concatenated together uh, were in L. Okay, so um, we know that D is going to um, accept or reject each of these component strings. It will never run forever because D is a decider. So we know that A uh, for, so in step one, for each of the ways to cut W into parts, A is going to terminate for each one of those in finite number of steps. It's going to say, yep, or it's going to go back up to one and try something else. Okay, we know that there's a finite number of ways to cut W into parts. So the entirety of step one is going to terminate in a finite number of steps. This means either we're going to end up getting to step two, where all the cuts have been tried, so we're going to reject, or during some iteration of step one, in step 1A, we got an acceptance, and so we accepted and halted. Okay, so D prime is a decider. So what do we have? We have D, D prime is a decider for L star. Notice we never defined L. So this is a generic uh, decider that we would build specifically using the decider D for L. So once we know that L is decidable, we can build a decider D prime for L star. Okay, so D prime is a decider for L star, and this gives us L star is decidable based on L being decidable. Okay, so we have proved that the class of decidable languages is closed under the star operation.